Hello everyone, Attack Power here. Game two between Dennis Diderot and Japasa in the Steel Division 2, Division 3, Season 10 playoffs. Let's dive right in. Alrighty, folks, so we're here on Zabushin, and on the left in the blue, we have Japasa playing 17th SS Panzergrenadier on Maverick Income. And on the right, we have Dennis Diderot playing 6th Corporal Territorial on Maverick Income. So I, I'm, I'm amazed how many people don't ban 17th SS. I, I on, personally feel this is one of the strongest divisions in the game. So if you're not playing it, I would think you're banning it. Um, Sixth Corporal, we've actually seen this division a lot this season. Very popular. It's a new division. I think it's really solid overall. Uh, it struggles in A phase because it has little to no armor. And we saw uh, this matchup before, actually, earlier in the, the league season between a lot and... Uh, uh, I forget who a lot was playing, but um, yeah, maybe it was Flicks. And but it was it was rough. It was rough dealing with the light armor from 17th SS in Phase A for Sixth Corporal was really really rough. But we'll see if Dennis can handle it differently and get that pull out the W here. Remember, if you did not see Game One, make sure to go check that out so you can see the exciting Game One between these two players. Let's check out what we got going down here. Chapas has got an IG-18 salt gun, flamethrower, flammenwerfer, and an SBW-233 armored car. In the center, we have Pack 38 uh, AT gun, SBW-233 armored car. We have some flammenwerfers, an MG-42 heavy machine gun, an SS Legionati, and a Pioneer Fuhrer, a Pioneer Fuhrer, excuse me. And then we have a flammenwerfer, a Panzergren, and a SS Legionati. And down south here, we have a whole bunch going down. Uh, two IG-18s, a Pioneer Fuhrer. Two Flammenwerfers, two MG42s, a Panzergren, a Flak 36, and two SPW233s. Do want to mention quick the Pioneer Fair is in that traction, the super duper really fast car. Up north for Dennis, we have the Lunatist, the uh, sniper, the 45 mil AT gun, the Hotchkiss heavy machine gun, a Pioneer, a Kararashimoto, a Lieutenant Venatori Moto, a Pac 38, and two T70 Razveka recon tanks. Still up north, we have a Kararashi and then another 45 mil AT gun. Going in the middle, we have another, the other Lunatist sniper, a Hotchkiss heavy machine gun, Breda light assault gun, a Lieutenant uh, leader again, a Granicetti Kaladi, another Granicetti Kaladi, and a T-70 Razvedka. And down south, we have a Breda assault gun, Hotchkiss, a Pac-38 AT gun, a Multi, and a T-70 Resvedka. So, pretty standard deployments. No one's doing anything too crazy. In terms of deck builds here, checking this out quick. Um, nothing too crazy out of, of 17 SS. They just have a variety of things. Lots of 2K stuff to work with. The SPWs, the SPW 231s are coming in B, but he has the SPW 222 in A phase. Um, the usual spattering of infantry set up pretty normal. Uh, Stug 4s, A and B phase only though. Uh, IG 33 and 18s in A phase. We do see a Pack 43 group in B phase along with a Jagdpanzer 4. So interesting there. Uh, then we have a full suite of AA in the, in the A tab. Already tab has both Neville Werfers, the 150 and 300 mil in B phase, along with the 105 SKs. And there's one Neville Werfer in A phase as well. Uh, no fighters, just a BF 109 with rockets. And then over on 6th Corporal Territorial, pretty standard build as well. Rashid's are coming in B phase though. Important to note, there's a Flak 36 in A though as well. Here we go. Let's begin this game. Potez Recon coming in here for Dennis right off the back. Going to spot out some troops here. Zabuch in a very strange map uh, because this, this red flag here is basically uncapturable by red at the beginning of the game. Blue basically can and must capture it for free. Uh, and then on the bottom, it's really easy for red to get to this blue flag here. Although I would argue it's a it's a lot easier for blue to re-grab this flag than it is for red to re-grab this flag over here. Uh, but the thing is then it's really easy for red to pressure this flag out here in the open by putting troops in this forest here. Um, and then you can't really get as close from the blue side. So it's it's a just a weird map that you end up with these really lopsided like usually it ends up the front line goes like this like a cross. It's kind of weird. Can't say I love this map. I, I wouldn't say I hate it, but I definitely am not a huge fan personally. It's definitely not like a battle. I'm not like upset to be on this map, but it, it can be very challenging. SBW 233 opening up on some of these light in, uh, units here. SBW 233 outranging the 45 mil, which is quite bad. That means he'll be able to pick these things off quite easily. BF 109 in already. 
Rockets come off, trying to take out the Lunatics. Lunatics is already falling back, though. See, both players 12-12, despite, you know, they both made progress, but of course they made progress equally. Multi down here grabbing this flag. Is the Panzergrad? Nope, the Panzergrad's not pushing forward. Looks like Japas has decided just to give this flag up. I'm really surprised that Dennis did not try to get anything into this forest here. Even just one Flammenwerfer can really be quite the pain in the butt. Pioneer Fear going down. Uh, Japasa with a micro mistake right there, letting his leader get killed. We also saw a leader die here in the center. Another mistake there i think he was a little too aggressive of expecting his traction to get it like way up here but i, I don't think i'd want a leader up that far anyway it's not much of a fighter pianini uh, just pretty a pretty standard cqc pioneer squad does have two submachine guns and the neorita is a solid submachine gun overall flamme versus though should easily take that out legionati of course very strong with its four berettas uh they're easy to cream most things along with its molotov MG42 versus Hotchkiss. Uh, MG42 is out in the open. That's the issue. But the SPW233 here to swing the favor back in the MG42's favor. Uh, more, 60 mil mortar, though. Going to start doing some work. These things are lovely, lovely, lovely little weapons here. The Romanians and the Americans both get the pleasure of using these. And they are a pain in the rump. They can basically swing any fight in your favor. And they can kill stuff. Uh, uh, it definitely is not like a strong killing ability, but they certainly do damage. IG-18 here going down to the... I'm assuming the Breda. 13-11 now for Dennis, picking up this flag down south. It's really up to Japasi here, I think, to take an A-phase lead because his light armor can be really hard to counter out of you know with sixth corporal but i'm not sensing a ton of aggression especially with his spw 233s which could be absolutely backbreaking pentagon is actually going to contest this point a little bit gonna try to crawl up the hill and there's nothing here to spot it or stop it that is still picking up this flag because of the breda here ig18 has not spotted that out yet mg42 getting spotted by the lunatist and the hotchkiss SPW is completely out of position. They could go here at least to like shoot at this machine gun. Another hot just coming. Grand Shady Kaladi pushing in. There's nothing to stop him. Uh, this is quite bad actually for Japasi. He needs to close this down. Black 36 now under attack. Even worse. Grand Shady Kaladi, a triple machine gun, 20 point unit. Super efficient, very strong. This is the only division. Sixth Corporal is fun because it has a lot of very unique units. It's got the Dubla, which is one of the best AA pieces in the game. It's got these Grenadier Kaladi, which is a really, really efficient, strong triple machine gun unit. There's not many of these in the game, and to get one for only 20 points is pretty nuts. You get these Multi, which are basically Panzergren MG34s with the TNT. Uh, that's also very strong. It's kind of interesting because 17th SS is similar. It's got a lot of unique units, such as the SS Legionati. I guess not as many unique units. I'm trying to think. No, I guess it doesn't have... I mean, Stug 4s. Other divisions have Stug 4s, but there's no division that has lots of Stug 4s. Nothing like this. Granite Cloudy, take out the Flammenwerfer. The SPW 233s need to be careful. The Granite they'll have no AT whatsoever. So it should be quite safe. But he is now capturing this flag. Volkdeutsch coming in. This is also one of the only divisions that gets Volkdeutsch. Volkdeutsch not being an incredible unit, but it is very efficient for what you get. 60 Memorial continuing to hound these units. Yeah, it's not about killing, it's about pinning all the time. It makes winning infantry combat very, very easy. Hotez Recon back in action. SS Legionati getting cut off here. The reinforcers really suck. You have to like bring in the reinforcement to here and then move it into the town. It's really obnoxious. IG-18 spotting out that Hotchkiss at max range. That's nice for it. Panzergren versus Multi. Well, it's a two-star Multi, and that's the issue. Now there's another Multi moving in. Infanteristi, junky 20-point units. They're, they're really not good, but they fill the line fine. SS Legionati not designed for long range, and also he's not in a building. Just going to note that. I Okay, and, and, and this will be very controversial. I still use auto cover. Call me a noob. I'm an auto cover user. I'll turn it off when I need to. Like, I just manually turn it off if I want it off. But otherwise, I want my troops jumping into buildings and stuff. I don't want them standing out in the open. If I'm really thinking hard enough to, like, hide behind a fence or something, I'll turn off the auto cover myself. 
T70, though, getting hunted by the Pac-38. MG42 in the outdoors. Infanterisi pushing in to capture this area here. Flak 36 forcing off the recon. Neville for 150 in, going after these support guns here. Nice target. I'm not sure how much damage it will do. It's not great. The Volkdeutsch really want to fight at range with their double machine gun. It's going to get surrendered. There's no leader here to keep it from happening, and I don't think the SPWs are close enough. Oh! Panzer Shrek gets off. Will it get the second off? Chapasa now falling back desperately. Does not get out in time. Oh, that's a major loss. He was being he was really nursing those SPWs. Breda does go down and some nice damage to the other units, so definitely not a total waste. Volkdeutsch finally trying to pressure this flag, but now Dennis has moved troops into this forest area here. IG-18 opening up. Doing some nice damage. I mean, that's the whole point of it. Volkdeutsch Pioneer unloaded, but they're out in the open. This is bad. Triple Granachetti versus the Volkdeutsch. They're both out of cover, actually. So the uh, MG-34 puts down a lot more suppression, I believe. But this thing has disheartened. You never know. Kadarashi pinning down troops. You get so many snipers. These Romanian divisions just get a lot of snipers. And, it's, and it can be very tough to handle. It's very frustrating, I know that. T-70 does get picked off by that Pac-38, which is now under pressure from the Multi, but the MG-42 should be able to force that off pretty easily. Multi has been forced off. Kadarashi, of course, are recon, but the Volkdeutsch need to move back into position if they want to contest that flag. 60 mil mortar continuing to pound away. Me, personally, I'm a defensive fire kind of guy. You just throw your 60 mil on defensive fire. It just shoots at anything that moves. It's quite useful. I don't need to be picking targets. It doesn't kill things very often, so I don't need to specify the target. I just want whatever shows up to get pinned down or hurt a little bit. Constantly poking. Just constantly poking and picking at it. IG-33 coming in. A fair choice here. Can help to clean or clear out some of these units. Another Pack 38 as well. SPW-222's in. Again, I just don't, I don't think Chapas is being aggressive enough with his light armor here early. This is really his only opportunity to take advantage of it. Once we get to B phase, the T-3485 shows up. And although, I mean, that does not solve all your light armor problems. The T-3485 is a little bit, probably too big for town fighting. It's a little too heavy. It's too easy to f catch it places. Um, and then a Stug-4 trades very efficiently with it at that range. But it, he does have, like, something to work with then. Uh, right now, he really doesn't. These T7s being the only thing. He's already lost two. One, and I think there was another one, if I'm not mistaken. There's two up here. It's almost out of them. Oh, Opel Blitz going down. I don't know what a what, actually. I mean, oh, this Pack 38 This position is so obnoxious. It kind of looks like looks down the hill. Yeah, like this, right here, and then that pack 38 just down there. I've gotten caught out in that one before. SW222 catching out the lieutenant here. It, the lieutenant does have a Panzer Shrek, so that is very dangerous. Japasa finally clearing this area out. Remember, we're on mirrored income again. So right now, this advantage Dennis is picking up is quite significant. IG-18 should beat the Breda. It is a little bit stronger in the HE department. The Breda, once it gets on target and starts firing, it, it, it pumps rounds out so quickly. It's missing, though, so far. It hasn't actually done any damage yet. IG-18 finally opens up a second time. It's already taken two damage, though. I'm, uh, I think the IG-18's going down. Shows you the power of these Breda guns. It's I would honestly... Yeah, it's technically in the support tab, but I wouldn't rate its HE damage super highly. Uh, infantry push here. Dennis picking up two flags currently and now going to the 59. Nebelver for firing again. Takes out the Lunatist. Definitely not bad. Breda guns getting pinned down. They're all over the place. I believe these are the last of them. We have Inter Infantaristi, Granicheri, Kaladi. Uh, uh, Dennis using his cheap infantry, his 20 point infantry, really efficiently here to make pushes everywhere. Granicheri, Kaladi in close range versus the Volkdeutsch will win because they're. Machine guns are automatic rifles, while the MG-34 is a light machine gun, which means it cannot fire within a 100 meter range. Legionati, I don't know who wins this, honestly. Well, the Flammenwerfer ruins it. I hate when, the, I hate when units ruin the one-on-ones that I'm trying to figure out who would win. Volkdeutsch gets surrendered, though, barely putting any suppression on this Granatschei Kalari. Like I said, that was a bad fight start. 
Bulk Deutsch are especially bad at close range because they build up suppression so quickly. IG-33 spotting out that Breda. It's had enough of that, and delete goes the Breda. IG-33, though, kind of in an awkward spot here. I don't think it's going to be able to spot the multi, and the Kaladashi's chilling here, waiting for it to come into range. Oh, excuse me. Sorry for the on. BF109 gets its rocket straight off, goes down. Dubla, insanely strong A piece. Uh, arguably the best in the game. I'm going I'm to say arguably. I mean, yes, there's some stuff out of Toulon, like the double 37 mil. That is stronger than this. But for price, pound for pound, price-wise, this thing is by far the strongest thing in the game. Can easily single-handedly shoot things down. Pack 38 catching out some, some vehicles. Has to retarget on the... SPW-222, SPW-222 will cheekily get out of there. Just barely, though. 1311 still for Dennis. We are in B phase, so the point's flowing, and Sixth Corporal finally has access to its armor. We also see the Punity Assault in B phase. Very strong CQC unit here with Double Flamer. He did bring them in B, so he gets eight of those, so a nice number of those going on there. We finally see a Stug 4. That's something we haven't seen yet. That's just Legionardi, the right choice here for close combat. But unfortunately, he's actually not within 100 meter range. He's actually fighting a little far. But the nice thing is the Bredas have the 150 meter range, which means it's still going to fire. SBW222 catching out that Grenadetti Kaladi. That'll, that'll pick up that nice kill there, clearing that out. Once this Infantry East is dead, he might be able to push back onto this flag. Dennis at a 15-9 currently, though. He needs it. PNED Assault going to be a real issue. Breda doing its damage. Legionnaire are strong CQC units, but not as strong as PNAD Assault are. MG42 versus Schwadloza. MG42 should be an easy win. PNAD Assault do exactly what we expected. Wipes them out. 16-8 currently for Dennis. Schwadloza catches out this Pentagram holding this flag. The uh, Kalaladashi got wiped out by the IG-33. Schwadloza down from the MG42 did basically nothing. I'm not a fan of Schwadlozas. They're really quite bad. Like, bad. Like, it, it's a bad machine gun. One of the worst. Not as bad as the Italian one, that's for sure, but a really crappy machine gun. Neville Verfer going after the 60 mil. Misses. I think that was probably a missed shot, like missed target. I'm not a big fan of going after the 60 mil. So here's the, always the issue with 60 mils. They're so darn cheap. They're only 40 points. Even if you kill them, you just call another one in. And you really haven't gained much because they're only 40 points. So it's just such a low value target that does so much damage. That's why they're so good. Because you barely invest anything to get this right here. All the time. The entire game. Shvaloza does pin down the IG-33 successfully with the Shook 4. Probably will finish it off. Kadadashi back in here. Snipers doing what they do. Tearing through infantry. 60 mil mortars are constantly firing. Nice to see how much micro Dennis is doing here. Pioneer right, goes down. T70 on the hill now, hitting these infantry. IG33, is it finally in position here to hit the Moti? It looks like it is. Schwarlos are here though now. Oh, now with both, this could be a problem. This could be a serious issue. IG33 gets a shot off, clears out the multi. Decides to fall back. Yeah, I was going to get pinned before it could get the shot off. Pack 38 needs to get into position. The problem is all this yellow farce is going to keep him from getting there. More pioneers and multi in here. SPW, though, that is currently undestroyable with these infantry. That's going to be an issue. SPW 222 233 kills off a unit in the transport, but 45 mil kills that SPW 222. That was, oh. That was a linchpin of this defense here. He was just too aggressive. SS Legionati, eh, we'll see. Well, it depends on which way they run from the Molotov. But look how much damage those Berettas put down. Oy. SBW-222 goes down to the T-70. Razvedka-233 responds in kind, takes that out. P-80 does get its grenade off, kills off that Legionati. 59 now for Dennis. Only 10 minutes left for Japasa on the double tick. And this is the tough part of blue side here. It's really hard to hold this flag. You, you just, yeah, it's really obnoxious. It's so easy to move troops here, unless you have something that can totally cut off this reinforcement here. And then, you know, you, you eliminate this and you just got to hold everything off for a while. It's very, very tough. 
T70 down here did go down to the pack 38, so he's cleared out that light armor. We are seeing our first T3045s. Now, these are actually the 1943 variants with the 1750 meter range. I don't actually know if it's the 1943 variant specifically. I just know the leaders all have the 1750 meter range, which should mean they are the 1943 variants. Ooh, I, uh, I'm pretty sure the Legionati are the only thing that come in in the DMAs. No, he's got Panzergrens coming in, so that was a Panzergren, not the biggest deal. Double Nevivore for now, that's a little bit overkill, though, I mean, if you consistently want to kill thing, you do need two Nevivorfers. They will fail relatively often as one. Panzergren getting targeted by the 60 mils, and again, it's just this constant poke of damage, although that one mistargeted. And that's again why I like the defensive fire. You can just, the, the computer doesn't miss. It really doesn't. It just picks something. Ooh, pack 38 getting a pen. It really should mostly bounce at this range. Shug 4 having 100 meters, millimeters of armor and the pack 38, 100 millimeters of penetration on its regular gun, but it gets the kill. Wow, that's a big loss there. Pioneer, uh, Pioneer Fear here holding the line. I uh, can't say I'm a huge fan. Pioneer Assaults, Karadashi Moto, and these are very strong infantry units moving in. He's, I don't see what holds those these off. Unless they die in the transport, that, that would be pretty bad. Although the Pioneer Assault get out in their suicide assault. They do go down. The other one gets out. Karadashi Moto survive. Unfortunately, the Pioneers threw their grenade. Hands are going to get back on this flag. How far are they going, though? Uh-oh. They're revealing to the multi, although the IG-33 will help solve this problem. Shvarloza, which one's it going to pick? Oh, Panzergren goes down in the transport to possibly being a little too aggressive with his transports now, desperately trying to get back in positions. He actually lost this flag up north. Is this two now in as well? Pioneer does successfully kill off the... the uh, Whatever you call them, the, the, the Kanadashimoto. Potet's coming in, very solid plane, medium resilience, quite quick, and an okay bomb loadout. The heavier one has a better bomb loadout, but this one works just fine. IG-33 going down, it's a big loss. I, I honestly would have just left that on the hill. I don't, I don't see what line of sight you gain by moving that far forward at all. Like, this spots everything you spotted up here, so can't say I was a big fan of that in the first place. IG-33 going for the 45 mil. Will it finish? It should finish it off. I would think. One hit should do it. And there it goes. Nice kill there from the IG-33. Neville Verfers going after the 60 mil mortars. This is a concentration of two. I would go after two. If they're close enough to hit with both, then yes, that is worth it. 231 finally stops these multi here. Crumpling in that line. Let's see if we kill some 60 mils here. We do kill the supply, which is almost as important, honestly. But no, we don't have enough damage to kill both. That's rough. Or either, I should say. He didn't kill either. I gotta say, unless we just don't see Dennis using the smart order, I'm really impressed at how often he's keeping these 60 mils firing. I mean, if he's if he's hand... Oh, the Breda getting a side shot on the Jagdpanzer. Oh my goodness! Oh! -ho! Oh, a Breda has no business killing a Jagdpanzer IV. That is really rough. Oh, man. Oh, I'd be flipping a keyboard. <laughs> I'd be throwing keyboards right now if I was your boss on that one. Oh, man. That is, that's really unfortunate. SBW 233, of course, no chance against that T-34. Kanadashi moving in to give the long-range firepower that he desperately needs in this position. To try to start pushing this flag out here. T-3485. This too goes down to the IG-33. Nice kill there. Will the Pianidia Assault get in? No, they definitely won't. Pack 40 though, unfortunately, for Japasi using APCR. Although it still killed it completely, so... Hmm. Interesting. Pandagran do catch out the Pianidia Assault. This Pandagran moves in too soon though. It's not pinned down yet. Legionati readjusting their path here. Pioneer Assault is pinned down. That's a big, that's a big kill if he can get it. He got this flag back. Still 15-9 though. Now he lost this one. Kadadashi Moto though can't do anything about these 2-3-1s and 2-3-3s, although this T-3045 certainly can. IG-33 is doing a lot of work. 
Honestly, they're kind of the thing holding the line right now. Yep, down goes another unit there. Stug 4 should be very safe from this Breda, although again, we've seen Breda's pen things they have no business petting. Pretty often. Now, the Jagdpanzer 4, that was side armor. That was 100% side armor. There's, it cannot, it, sh it should be a 0% pen chance for a Jagdpanzer 4. Another Kadarashi here in position, opening up on the Panzergren. 231 could go help it. It's very possible. It just depends on if he decides to do that or not. T3485, or if, he, if he's even noticed. He has. He has noticed. All right, so here he goes. Oh, but there's a pack 38 here. What a play here out of Dennis. Right on top of this. And we know that these there's no more IG33s to call in. He only had three. Potez coming in. There is a flak 36 up north. It can't stop it. And down goes another. Oh, no, he missed. Interesting. Nebelwerfer's kill off a T3485. Nice kill there. Nebel Warfare 150 can be just so strong. They're so cost efficient. Uh, at a, like, what is it, 100 points, right? I'm going to look at, let's see over here in the deck. Yeah, 100 points for like seven, I think it's seven or eight shots out of this thing with ammo. Like, you get 100 points for ammo in this thing. Seven or eight volleys, you can you can really rack up some points out of those things if used well and if good targets are chosen. T3045 here now, that's going to be an issue. He's Kadarashi now free to do whatever they want. Legionati finally surrendering out some of these infantry here. I will say, uh, Japas has broken down these Peony Assault quite well. They are very strong. But not strong enough here, it appears. IG-33 spotting a Gennady Shetty Kaladi doing what it does best and deleting some of those units. This flag recaptured now completely and with the Kadarashi defending here. Now we do get a Panzergren getting into this position, so that's pretty huge. Multi killed off by the Panzergren. This Panzergren needs to go help. The Kadarashi will beat the MG34 Panzergrens at range like this. Oh, the T3485 swinging back around. Where is this Panzergren going? Why? Why is it going here? Which is a weird place for it to go. Peony Assault though getting in. Jagdpanzer 4 gets the bounce from the Zist 2. Honestly, as long as this isn't using APCR, it should bounce this thing all day. Jagdpanzer 4 backing off. He needs some infantry. He's lost in this flag now. 16-8 again for Dennis. Only two minutes left here for Yapas. He's got to bounce out, and he decides he cannot. Wow, very impressive play here from Dennis. Zabuchin, 24 minutes, 28 seconds here. Dennis taking game two and winning this playoff match. 23-40 to 1900. I, I got to say I'm impressed. I, I think Sixth really struggles against 17th SS in a vacuum. Uh, but Dennis being able here to outplay Yapasa. Uh, we see an Infanteristi. Oh, that was the one that got the two Panzer Shreks off and stuff. Uh, yeah, that was, I mean, a uh, Panzer Faust, excuse me. That was, that was nuts. This Breda, they, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to win when 40 point light AT guns are getting this many kills. It, it's really hard to win. T3045 taking out a couple things. That's it though. SBO 233 did some nice work. IG-18 did as well. Nebelver forgot a couple kills here. IG-33 doing okay. Yeah, the IG-33s were quite good. Actually, Sixth Torpal does struggle at 2k range. I mean, it's got things. It's got T-3045s, Flax, and Rashitsas. But outside of that, it has nothing else. So it can really struggle in the HE department for dealing with those sort of things, specifically IG-33s. If you guys enjoyed that content, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more SD2, and consider checking out the Patreon. Thanks a bunch, and have a fantastic day.